Hi, and welcome to this edition of Financial Planning Innovation. It's my pleasure to have on the line Melinda Coghill. She's a Medicare expert. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, I have to ask you this question. How did you get started in the Medicare space? It's not necessarily something people find as a career path uh, early on, right? No, not at all. And and I didn't actually do it intentionally myself either, but I was basically spoon-fed Medicare as a kid at the dining room table when I was growing up because my mother, my co-founder, is a nationally recognized Medicare expert of many decades. So I guess you could say it's a family tradition. All right. <laughs> so there you go. Well, it's funny. We share that in common because, as you know, I got into the long-term care space because my dad's one of the pioneers in long-term care. I feel like in this business, you have to get in that way, right? Right. Yeah, no, you kind of do, but I'm really glad I'm here, but it's it's not where I expected to be. So So tell me a little bit about the business you co-founded with your mom. How did, exactly do you work? I know you work with financial advisors and consumers. How does that look? <laughs> So we started our um, consulting company, 65 Incorporated, in 2012, basically doing educational consultations on a fee-for-service basis. We are not affiliated with the sale of Medicare insurance. We are simply educators, consultants. But what we found out in the process is there's a lot of people who need Medicare guidance who aren't getting it. And they are turning to professionals that they already trust in hopes that they'll help them. But for the most part, these financial professionals, these other HR professionals really aren't helping. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took our consultation process and put it into software so that other financial professionals in particular can provide that same sort of Medicare enrollment guidance, expert, unbiased, fast, easy, simple, understandable, without having to become a Medicare expert themselves. That's so that's awesome. the idea. Yeah, and, and it's amazing that you created a software program to do this. That's why it's so innovative, and I wanted, I was so excited to have you on the show today. Let's talk about your step-by-step -step process, because I think that's really interesting. Why don't you take us through how you work with a financial advisor and their client and what, what steps you take them through? Sure. So today, most people believe that Medicare enrollment is a three-step process. What, what what they believe is that step one is choosing plans, United Healthcare, Humana, Aetna. Step two is then engaging with Social Security to get enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B. Then they get their Medicare card in the mail, and then they actually enroll in the Humana, Aetna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. That's the three steps most people believe Medicare is. No. Step one is not picking plans. It's determining your timing. Do you enroll now at age 65 or do you delay? There's so many regulations that determine whether you enroll partially, fully, not at all. And if you get it wrong, ouch. So timing is step one. Step two is then before, determining the type of coverage. Oh, sorry, we, sorry. Yeah, before we jump into step two, I know you had a really yeah. interesting story to share about the timing of this, right? And people always have to deal with this. They're talking to their HR person. They're approaching 65. Why don't you tell us kind of like a common situation that arises with regard to timing? Sure. There's a lot of factors that determine whether a person should enroll or delay. So one of our clients, for example, John, headed into his HR department when he was about to turn 65 and said, hi, guys, turning 65. What do I need to do about Medicare? And they said, nothing, John. You're still employed. You're still enrolled in the group coverage. You're good to go. So he didn't do anything related to Medicare, which was unfortunate because the company was a small employer, less than 20 employees. As a result, he should have taken action to enroll in Medicare Part A and B in order to have a primary payer, somebody who pays the first typically 80% of bills, but he didn't. Now he is the primary payer and likely will have to go back and pay for all of the care he's received since turning 65. So, ouch. Yeah. Ouch. And these are yeah. expensive mistakes to make. That's why it's so critical to find somebody who's a Medicare expert like yourself, because again, getting yeah. through those steps the right way and not tripping up on all the complexities here is so critical. Right. And people don't realize how complex Medicare is, especially in the age of Medicare for all. It's free. It's single payer. It's no pre-existing conditions. 
I don't know what they're talking about, but it's not Medicare. So that's not what Medicare is. So right, right. Or, or like you had mentioned, more than half of people in the country believe that it covers long-term care, which of course it doesn't. Yeah, know. 56% of seniors, that's their long-term care plan. Uh, you know. yeah. yeah, that's a really bad long-term care plan. Really bad. <laughs> so step one is timing. Oh. What's step two? Mm-hmm. Step two is determining the type of coverage that's best for your unique needs. So is it original Medicare with a supplement? Is it Medicare Advantage? Does the client have retiree coverage options, military coverage, federal employer health benefits? There's lots of different options that a a person could technically have. So it's really important they look at the options they have and choose what's best for them, not their spouse, not a best friend, not an insurance agent's portfolio. Because... People don't know this. The decision on the type of coverage that you make can become permanent later in life. Right. It's so important to do that fact finding, you know, to figure out, like I said, do they have access to a veteran type benefits? That's what you're talking about with some of the Mm -hmm. options with the military. So if you know those fact finding steps, you can help guide them in the right direction. So what's step three? Of the process. Step three is then actually picking specific plans. So once you know the timing and the type, then you start digging into Humana, United Healthcare, Aetna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and choosing a plan based on more than premium. Do not ever pick a p- plan based on nothing but premium. Right. So and that's step three. And I think people think of Medicare sometimes as a commodity, right? Because of how it's priced, mm-hmm. but a lot of them have different benefits. Um, I know you had shared a story with me about prescription drug coverage with certain plans. Tell us about the client, mm-hmm. you know, where, where she made a, a multi hundred thousand dollar decision that was important to her in her re-enrollment process, right? Yeah, because if you're choosing a, a plan based on nothing but premium, you're not taking a look at whether or not your medications are really covered or how they're covered or if your doctors are in network or out of network. So this particular woman was about to go into a plan that didn't cover two of her brand name medications. The difference in out-of-pocket costs between the lower premium plan that didn't cover those medications and the higher premium plan that did, $235,000. Wow. 235. That's a house. That is the house, a very nice house in many areas. So, yeah. So important. Let's talk about step four. Step four is where you actually head to the Social Security Administration. People think there's a Medicare department. No. Social Security Administration runs Medicare enrollment. So head to Social Security and get enrolled in parts A and B. Mm -hmm. So then you get your Medicare card in the mail. Okay. And that leads us to step five. Step five, once you have your Medicare card, then you can enroll in the Part D drug plan, supplements, advantage plans you chose in step three. So it's sort of like an administrative step. (laughs) Right. And then finally, what's step six? Step six is another one of those steps that appears to be invisible to too many people. They think I'm enrolled in Medicare. I'm done. No. Step six is reviewing your coverage annually because each year Medicare Advantage plans and Part D drug plans essentially change how they work. Premiums, providers in network, pharmacies in networks, the medications they cover and how they cover it. If you are not taking a look at how your coverage will change in the coming year and making appropriate plan changes, you are the one left paying the bill. And again, that bill can be thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of difference. Okay, cool. And you know, one thing that I found so innovative about your approach is you actually built a software program for advisors, for financial professionals to help guide them through, I know, steps one and two that we talked about, correct? Yep, particularly steps one and two. There's resources in there to help through the rest of the steps, but we are designed to help financial advisors remain in the fiduciary space whenever that is what they prefer to do. So timing and type are two very powerful fiduciary educational steps that you can engage with your clients in and really nobody else consistently is. So it's a really powerful way to provide peace of mind to clients about a topic they're scared about. And when you do this, you have just a huge opportunity to use the Medicare conversation as a jumping off point for other financial planning conversations. So, you know, right. you were talking about long term care before. Long term mm-hmm. care, I never have to deal with long term care, never. 
I'm yeah. running away because that's depressing. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> but Medicare, as soon as I'm about to turn 65, I have to deal with Medicare. So financial advisors using that Medicare conversation can then kick the door open to long-term care planning. Hey, Medicare doesn't cover it. Right, so right. maybe we should think about that proactively. So there's a lot of and referrals. Oh my gosh, hands down referrals because you are helping them feel better about something they're legitimately frightened about. So well, I really appreciate you being on the show, Financial Planning Innovation today. I think the software you developed and just helping advisors out there, it's really commendable. So thanks again and hope to have you on future hey, episodes. Thanks for spreading the word. I really appreciate it. Some really important topics. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.